All right, perfect. Well, we are live here with our very first In Conversation with. I just want to quickly welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're very excited to have you. And we are very excited to have our special guest today. We have Greg Wright joining us. Hi, Greg. Thank you. Hello, guys. Well, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, well, Greg, we're so excited to have you and to kind of dive into our subject today. Uh, but first, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just make a couple uh, quick comments. Um, what we'll go ahead and plan to do, just to make sure we're doing good on time, is to hold the questions until the end. Um, and then we will go ahead and answer any questions that anyone might have at that point. We'll be monitoring the chat. So go ahead and drop your questions into the chat and we will be seeing those so we can share them with Greg. So again, thank you everyone so much for joining us. This is In Conversation with Greg Wright, General Products for the Modern Consumer. All right. Well, Greg, why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey in the profession? What got you started and maybe the most valuable lesson you've learned so far? Wow, well, I got started working with my mom and dad in 2010 and it's amazing how that that 10 years has just flown by and a lot of people say that in the last 10 years the funeral service world has changed more than it had in the prior 100 years or maybe 150 even so it's been amazing to just be part of this change and just see the traditions that started uh, my my dad started representing messenger stationery in the early 90s after um, adding that to representing continental computers and through that time when i came on messenger started adding some keepsakes that were other companies and rather than trying to invent the wheel they partnered with some of these companies and those are the companies we're going to be talking about today and as far as ah, what i've learned is don't assume anything i mean just like i've learned that some of our clientele that i didn't think would be interested in something new I'm really glad that I told them about it because I was blown away that they embraced it and wanted to learn more about it. And I can take that a little step further and suggest that funeral directors might want to consider that with families as well. Most definitely. Well, what we're going to first talk about is actually going to be something that was new to me. Even as a funeral director, I had never heard about this. And what that is, is a DNA preservation. So maybe, Greg, you can just start by telling us what is it? I've, I've never heard it's, of it. It's it amazing. I, I first encountered um, this company based in Thunder Bay, Ontario, that had it's it's run by scientists and they have mastered how to preserve and store dna in small vials at room temperature so it's really become a huge change in the way dna used to be preserved you know we're just in the infancy of understanding the science around dna um you know i'd liken it to how much we knew about blood transfusions in the 1600s. We don't know anything about DNA other than just like we kind of figured out a couple things, ancestry, some of those elements. So by preserving DNA for future use, you can do tests for medical and genetic issues. Um, and you can also do the ancestry. You can do reports that are giving a little more deeper dive than you get from ancestry.com and me. It's amazing stuff. Post war DNA. This is the last opportunity to save grandma's DNA to create a real family profile to understand all the medical issues that may surround your family. Yeah, and it looks like we have some profiles here on the screen um, of a couple different yeah. people um, who've, who've chosen to do that. And great. What just is something. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, nothing. Please, you had a you had a question. 
No, I was just wondering what what's the collection process like? Is it invasive, easy to do? It's super easy to the point where we've had some funeral homes that were already doing swabs for every single case that came through. And so it, it required no additional work for them. They just were offering this service to the families then afterwards. So basically you take, you do two swabs on each side. So you mm -hmm. end up sending in four swabs. You don't need to send them in right away. Um, they will maintain their integrity for at least six weeks. So this way you've got it on hand, the family then can decide later on in that time before going to the expense of paying to get that preserved and then possibly getting the, some of the different reports tied in with either, you know, it's like a premium ancestry report or um, a genetic profile that talks about medical. Oh, I see. And it looks like they have some DNA keepsakes. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that? I'm familiar sure. you know, with other cremation keepsakes, but what well, else? That's it. They just recognize that for some people, the emotional connection mm -hmm. can be just as strong as any of the scientific background of mm -hmm. why you might want to save um, the DNA. But mm -hmm. some of these um, remembrance pieces the um, the egg shaped or the rings or the pendants, they will actually just like what happens like for with DNA memorial, they mail in um, a box you get a box inside it is uh, is this vial that shows the name on it and this can be used in the future for up to 200 different, DNA tests as we start understanding more and more about it. So, so just like with the DNA that has been saved on a substrate inside this vial, they'll use some of that material in these remembrance pieces that you see on the screen. Wow. And so I guess what kind of drew me to this was the name Lazarus DNA, you know, the biblical reference to Lazarus. Um, are they going to oh. bring the dead back eventually? Or what's, what's no, the no, 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 no. And there's no, there's no cloning. Oh, okay. Guys. Um, since they are in Canada, there's the assurance, the privacy laws are much greater in Canada than we have here. So that all of that DNA information go straight back to the family unless you decide that you want to have it stored in their facility there, but it's not shared with anybody. A lot of the places, if you are sending in for your own personal DNA to some of these different outlets that advertise a lot, mm -hmm. you've given mm -hmm. all that information up by, and mm -hmm. you're sharing it with the world. So there's something safe about that. Lazarus DNA is the consumer facing side of DNA Memorial. They titled it that because they've done a lot of work with um, on research for investigations, police investigations with deaths and stuff and, and identify bodies off of their DNA and recover them from postmortem in some cases where you might not be able to. It, and they can do matches from things like hairbrushes and hats, pipes. It's really interesting just the, the things that stick around, <laughs> so to speak. So Lazarus DNA is a, an easy way for a funeral home that doesn't want to get involved with sending all this in. They'll do, they can get a swabbing fee and they will get a percentage of the price of the same sort of reports that are offered if the funeral home was to do it themselves. I see. So even similar to maybe how funeral homes have urns or merchandise on display, they could just have like a couple brochures, right? And then you exactly. know, they don't have exactly. to sell it to the family. The family could just select it if it interested them. Exactly. And, and it's not for everybody, but yeah. it's still one of those things. And you can get around the discomfort of not being completely comfortable with explaining the process of collection or why even. Mm -hmm. um, 
but it's still, um, you can have these brochures available so the families know about it. You just want to do it before embalming or cremation to God. capture that. Well, maybe one day they can take it from ashes. You never know what the future holds, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, I mean, this is just incredible. And these pieces here actually kind of remind me of what we're going to talk about next, uh, which is memory glass and just a beautiful way to kind yeah. of uh, capture something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share a video um, of the process of creating the memory glass. And we could just kind of see what it looks like. I never knew how they made memory glass. So let's go ahead and uh, hit play on that. So that quick part at the beginning where you see the three lines of the, um, the cremated remains put out there on top of the glass were rolled, that went viral because people couldn't believe what they thought they were seeing with the, the thin lines. But that they're actually using the cremated remains in the glass when they blow that glass and create whether it's a pendant or an orb or um just like this right here these um this is was on a recent catalog and you can see the scale this way these are the little touchstones that you'll see on the right side of the screen and it's great for someone they can carry it around in their pocket and it doesn't need to be the cremated remains inside the glass. It could just be that fingerprint etched onto it. Or, um, boy, there's endless possibilities. I know that um, someone in Texas got really interested in the fact that you can use uh, the soil from a gravesite mm -hmm. to make these um, keepsakes. So it doesn't have to be used and offered just to cremation families. Um, you can use, I know someone in Nebraska, the family got those, um, the touchstones with etchings. There was, it was not a cremation, but they got a, an etching onto that along with the fingerprint. And these are just valuable keepsakes for people. They're, they're tactile people can hang on to them. Wow. So could you put other substances besides soil? Like, could you do sand from where you scattered someone's ashes? Could you do hair? Like, yeah. what else could you put in there? Well, I had to call California to ask that because I, I remember um, when we were talking about this originally, you'd ask me, I said, no, it'd burn up. <laughs> but as they told me yesterday, and this is a quote, um, the hair is still the essence that hair is encased in glass. Sure, mm -hmm. there, but so that, that person's essence is held inside the, the glass. So yes, they have gotten lots of cases where hair has been sent in and they have made these um, glass keys. Wow, well, what a beautiful way to memorialize someone, even if you don't choose cremation, because uh, I know some people feel like, you know, with traditional burial, maybe there's not as mo many memorialization options, but this is definitely a wonderful one you could use for burial or cremation, it looks like. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful. And it's our next one is too. Yeah. Yeah, well, in our next one, it looks like, um, it looks like this also shows some of the other options for memory. Oh, I got to tell you about a beautiful thing that um, Memory Glass offers where they will, sh and if you do some internet searches, you'll see some videos that um, show up about, they can do the same as companion urns. They can use the ashes of a married couple and they'll tint them different colors. And so um, I think that what you see there, the orb on the right-hand side shows mm -hmm. both a purple and a pink. And those that's a couple that have both died, but they've been preserved together in that glass orb. Wow, that's beautiful. Can they do more than two colors? Do you know if it's limited to one or two or? You know, there's, 
one of the things is, is that Nick Savage, who created this company, they were the first people to do memorial glass with human cremains. Um, he's a real, he's a glass artist and that's how he got started. I'm sure that you could get them to do three, but he is such an artist that he's really looking at the color combinations mm -hmm. and making sure that every piece is individual and also every piece looks beautiful. Well, it's, it's very beautiful. I particularly like the heart ones. And I think on some of these, I see a stand. Does the stand light them up or is the stand just to kind of raise yes. them? Yeah. Or... Okay. Yeah, they, have, they have a couple different options on the stands and there's an uplift feature. I mean, on this one, they show, um, you can see there's a smaller stand but by lighting it from below you, and this one, the stars that are in the top of the, the flag symbol, symbol here are the actual cremains. Oh, wow. But they do, they become really dramatic. I mean, I know funeral directors that will make sure they turn on that light in their arrangement room before they bring a family in. And it really draws attention. It becomes that's, a focal point. That's definitely, that's cool. So that's something they could do for like maybe a veteran family or, or whatnot, make that American flag. That'd be great. Yeah. This is one of the designs. So yeah, here's a case of three different colors. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's pretty incredible, Greg. And what we're looking at next would be our whoops, legacy uh, touch. And this is also a good option for both burial and cremation families, correct? Oh, de definitely. Um, so much so that this, the, the theory behind legacy touch, they weren't the original people to do fingerprint jewelry but what they've done is they've taken it all to a new level with their e-commerce site the um they really encourage funeral homes to capture every single single fingerprint every case that comes in and as far as legalities they don't have to worry because if they're doing it for every single case you don't need to ask permission of the family this way if two months later, a grandson or a nephew is asking, you know, can we do this jewelry? You've got that fingerprint file. And, they've, and they also started out doing electronic capture rather than ink on paper. And that's been, um, we've gone through several cycles of the different platforms on how to capture them. And it's gotten easier and easier over the years. I think Legacy Touch is about seven years old and it's just been remarkable um, how easy it is because of the e-commerce site for the families to order it themselves at one in the morning rather than going back to a funeral home and saying, oh, can you get that jewelry for me? Because the funeral home can email the exclusive pin that has the loved one's um, fingerprints on file. And then anybody in the family can go and order this jewelry. Wow, that's wonderful. What about for families who've, you know, funeral directors, the uh, hardest day, but uh, when they've experienced an infant loss, what could they do that's a little different for an infant loss? Sure, what you can do is you actually take a picture of the entire hand or a footprint to, um, as a remembrance piece. And, and just because it's just too tiny, the fingerprints haven't developed yet um, on, on, an, on, a, on a baby. So yeah, and, and I, know, I know funeral directors that have used this for people that are alive still. Um, oh. And they've created charm bracelets for all their kids. And they're wearing a charm bracelet with each fingerprints of each of their kids on the pendants, on the little charms. That's a wonderful idea. How neat. Well, so it sounds like with this option, you know, you can do it for someone who's passed away, obviously, um, but you could also use it for someone who's still living. And I think that's going to be kind of similar uh, to our next option in a way. 
So maybe what we'll do is let's start by watching uh, this video about Tukios, and then maybe you can share a little bit about, you know, how a funeral director could use it, but also how a family could use it in a different way. So let's go ahead sure. and perfect. We'll go ahead and get, uh, get that on the screen here. All right, this is a good, this is a funny video. <laughs> Looking forward to it. We're gonna make a video really fast. Hi, I'm Emily with Tukios, and today I'm going to show you how to make a tribute video in under one minute. So let's get started. First, click on Create New Video, and you can type in the name and the dates for the subject of your video. Click Save, and you'll be taken to the Theme Selection step, and here you can browse through one of our hundreds of themes to choose the one that's just right. Select your theme, and you'll be taken to the Upload Link step. If you're going to be the only one editing the video, just go right to the Slide step, and click Upload Photos and Videos. How fast your photos upload will depend on your internet connection speed. Next, you can click Add Stock Clips and auto-select theme clips to add a curated set of clips that matches the theme. Then you can add a text slide by clicking the Add Text button, then selecting the Use Stock Text tab. Choose a quote or a scripture and add it into the video. Then you can click Shuffle Slides to quickly reorder them. Then all you have to do is go to the Music step and select a song or two that's close to the length of your video. After that, you can preview the video and then you're done. For a full walkthrough of the Tukios features, just click on the link below this video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact our support team. Thanks for watching! Yeah, the folks at Tukios have just done an amazing job in making it easy for people to make videos. It's an alternative and it's very inexpensive. Um, if you go through the messenger site, it's $18 to oh. produce these videos. I don't think I told you that before, did I? Oh, <laughs> I'm shocked. Um, yes, exactly. Um, wow. And a lot, of, um, a lot of people charge a lot more. What's also cool about Tukios is you notice that she says, if you're the only one involved with uploading the photos, mm -hmm. you can send out a, a link to the family that they can share. And so family members all over the country can be uploading their favorite photos. The big trick is, is you wanna make sure that you do put a limit on it because otherwise you might end up with a 20, 30 minute video. But the good thing is, is that Tukios will allow you to make two versions oh. with, for that same price without charging. So typically you would have, you'd want to have a shorter video if you're going to use it in a funeral service. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to want to have a long keepsake video that um, people want to buy CDs or get a jump drive of the 45 minute video, you can still do that for that $18. Wow. So you can revise the videos um, after the fact. Wow. That's and you can incredible. also send out a preview of the video before you um, finalize it that first time. So there's no touch to um, send it out so that the family can review the video first. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Um, yeah. It's, a lot of people really enjoy making the videos. Some folks like to spend several hours doing it and they like to do that. So they're not necessarily candidates for Tukios. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a busy funeral home, this can let every single funeral director look like a pro without having the one person at the funeral home who does all the videos do it. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. And I know there's instances where families make their own video, they bring it in, freak out mode, it doesn't play on <sighs> the uh, AV yeah. system. So 
having this option that's affordable is a great way to entice families, correct? To make a video we know is exactly. going to work. Exactly. And you can turn over all those features to a family member if it's appropriate. If you feel comfortable with it, you can let the grandson that was going to do the video that might not work <laughs> when it comes to time for the service, let them play with the system and go through and build the video. They, the family feels a sense of ownership. The guests sit through a, a, a nice professional video that um, is easy to watch. <laughs> so it's a win for everyone. It really is. And with all those backgrounds to choose from, you could use this for what, like a graduation? I mean, what else could you use a Forbes site? Oh, for people have used it for weddings, you know, for wedding videos after the fact. They've used it for um, graduations. I know some of the, um, I know people that have used it for their kids' little league teams. <laughs> so you can, you can, um, and you can make them as short as you want. Um, you might only need, you could do a 10, if you only had 10, 15 photos, you could still do a nice video to present at the service um, because you can incorporate those little video snippets that are available as well to tie in with the themes. You can have horses running across a meadow, um, all kinds of different aspects that are going to be suitable for everybody and really capture their loved one's um, passions. Wow. Well, that's that's pretty incredible. I wish I would have had a chance to use it when I was still working as a funeral director because that, that almost looks too easy. Yeah, I can't believe it. One it's minute. It's shocking. That? I mean, <laughs> no, no, it, it, it takes, she showed you how to do it in a minute. It'll still take you at least 10, 15 minutes to do it. A few minutes, but uh, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Well, what an incredible, incredible option to offer families and to use in many ways, it sounds like. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Greg, tell us what kind of trends do you foresee for 2021 and beyond? Oh gosh, the trends in keepsakes and just memorialization. I mean, I look at how um, Messenger got started in 1913 by Frank Messenger because he wanted to do religious calendars and make them available to the public. Mm -hmm. And so from that, he recognized that funeral homes could use these calendars for advertising. Mm -hmm. And that has become a long time traditional deal that is still very popular. Mm -hmm. We still print thousands of calendars for funeral homes to put their imprint on one side and the individual churches and they give them to the church and it's a form of advertising. So mm -hmm. from that messenger got involved in the, all the different stationary aspects and things like register books and um, the folders, service folders are some of the original forms of keepsakes that um, people would use. They've, it's evolved to where you've started adding fancier prayer cards, things like that. Um, some of the different keepsakes we've talked about already. So I have a, um, I'm very reluctant to talk about what some of these trends might be because it's changed so much and it mm -hmm. keeps changing. Just look what's happened in the last year on how people are doing funerals. Yeah, I don't think anyone foresaw a live streaming as the primary way of doing funerals or even as an option. I mean, the change has been yeah. so incredible. And wow. it happened quickly. It did. And because it just had to happen. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, it's pretty cool to see how Messenger has changed. I always appreciated using the folders when I was a funeral director. They have such beautiful designs. They're easy to use, perfect size. Yeah. People always love them. Uh, that's that's pretty yeah. cool. And Greg, what would be the one thing you want your audience to take away today? Hmm. Boy, like I'd said earlier, don't assume anything when you're talking to anybody. 
you might think you know what somebody likes or what somebody would like. And it, I think it really helps to just approach everybody you talk to. And it doesn't have to be in an arrangement either. Just all the time you need to just assume that, assume nothing and let people know you're there to help and um, let people know about all the options they might have. Definitely. And it looks like I have a couple audience questions coming in. Um, Greg, let's go ahead and maybe, I guess at this point, we'll just start answering these questions. Uh, this is a pretty sure. fun one. <laughs> I like this. What now, are, are people sending these in by chat? I didn't hear any, anybody. Oh, yeah, they were they were pinging them in. So um, okay, cool. That's yeah, great. and I know some are coming through to Marlena too. So I'll start with the couple that have come through to me. Um, what are some unusual requests you have heard of for memorialization? Oh, I mean, <laughs> oh gosh. Um, when we first started helping and working with Legacy Touch, people got concerned about why are some of our families asking for us to print out these PDFs mm -hmm. and sometimes make them a little larger or just why are they, why do they want them? Are they taking them to another company? We're out of the picture now. And what it turned out to be was in certain areas, it's become very popular to get tattoos of a loved one's fingerprint on your skin. <laughs> and so that was, a, that was a big surprise for me. Um, so yeah, I never thought of it, but think about it. It's like they've left their fingerprints on you. You know, it's like, it's like a hug. I was going to say you could use it to unlock an iPhone, but you know, like a hug would be better. <laughs> Hold up your iPhone there to your shoulder. Yes. It has to be the right scale. I think it's heat related, though, isn't it? Aren't yeah, the I iPhones, so. they have something to do with heat. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, I mean, that's a pretty cool request. I know sometimes um people take some of the ashes and they actually mix them in with tattoo ink and do tattoos i've heard of that oh wow um, okay fake. yeah well that's how memory glass got started nick savage ended up with someone's i don't know what family member it was but he was already a glass artist and that's mm -hmm. how he came up with the whole idea of doing memory glass uh so who knows? Like, just like I said, I'm not going to try to predict anything. <laughs> There's, um, gosh, uh, you go to a convention these days and you can see some pretty off the wall ideas that are getting floated by folks that are bringing outside ideas to this funeral service world. I mean, as people that are in the death care spectrum, I think mm -hmm. the people just need to be open to anything because the families might be wanting something that you might not feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. but ultimately we're taking care of families. Absolutely. And I'm also seeing one more question coming through. Oh, it looks like two. Uh, one of them is, do you think families are delaying memorialization due to COVID? <sighs> They're definitely delaying services in some cases where mm -hmm. they, um, I know that early on in the spring, people were even writing up all the arrangement plans with a T to be determined date. And they were putting off the services and, and a lot of those services have happened this um, during the summer and early fall, mm -hmm. but for instance, at Legacy Touch, May was one of their biggest months ever. Mm. And so that's, let me just, I got this just um, from Jamie McDermott, who's um, a lot of folks in the death care world know of him. And he works with Legacy Touch. And he basically just said from May through year end, Legacy Touch had solid sales. And, the great thing is, is that they kept up with their delivery through all this because 
people were, you, you can't postpone grief. I mean, this is a memorialization is a way to help people work through their grief. I mean, I, um, grief, um, grief stirs sadness, but remembering drives happiness. And so this is a way for people to start moving through and using these remembrances. I think that the families have figured it out. <laughs> they're, they're going ahead and doing these kind of remembrances, even if they are postponing some sort of celebration of life or a, a traditional funeral service. Definitely. Well, and Greg, I know you're hesitant. You don't want to make any predictions, but do you have any <laughs> changes you think might be happening 2021 and beyond? Anything that kind of comes to mind when it comes to Memorial Well, Day? along the tattoos, I met a funeral director years ago who I, he said, I, I'd get in trouble if I mentioned it to anybody. I'm going to go ahead anyway. But he had the idea of preserving, now this is uh, preserving tattoos, the flesh Ooh. that a tattoo is on, um, like a tannery. Wow. A little bit weird. I don't know that it's for everyone. <laughs> and I don't think that'll happen this year. <laughs> but uh, I do think, though, that people are looking at ways to memorialize their loved ones. I mean, Messenger has got this whole system now where they are able to print and print the same day on extra heavy cardstock that's laminated and get it out to the family in time for a traditional funeral service that same week. So anyway, there's lots of stuff out there between the glass remembrance pieces Christmas ornaments. I just look at like Legacy Touch, they added several new designs this last fall. Well, mm -hmm. right in November. And they become they became almost instant bestsellers. Um, Legacy Touch added a stainless steel keychain. And the retail price point was only $85. And they sold a lot in just the month of December. And so Something like that, it's affordable for most any family. And that might be more important to them than anything else that comes out of the funeral service. Agreed. It's what they hold on to long after the service is done, you know? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Marlena, did I take all the questions or do you have any other ones that I have missed? Looks like we've got one more. Oh, great. Um, somebody had asked, what is your dad's favorite memorialization product? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, shoot. I know that he's on this call and my mom is too. You'll see her Aww. names there. That's our direct, that's their direct house line that rings to her cell phone. But he has a, ter um, he's got it so he's using Bluetooth with his hearing aids um, on his cell phone. And that's why we get out his cell phone separately. <laughs> um, boy, I wish he could tell me right off the top. Um, I know that his favorite messenger design is something that uses a painting of the maroon bells, which is pretty much of a custom product. Um, a custom design that he did with Messenger, who's now, and it's now available to the whole country. But it's a painting of the Maroon Bells, which is sort of a signature location outside of Aspen, Colorado. And um, we've got a lot of our clientele in our region that aren't necessarily in Colorado, but they still just call it autumn because it's like an autumn painting with the Alpen glow shining on some mountains. And I know that's his big thing. And we've got a client that was asking about getting prayer cards in that design. And he still needs to call Messenger and ask them um, what the minimum order is to get prayer cards for the Maroon Bells. Um, he, he gets so excited that's, that it's infectious. It's infectious with the funeral directors that know him. And it's infectious with me. Um, just the things that when we learn about something new, it's exciting to go out and share it with folks and let them know about it. 
So I hope I I was right there, Dad. <laughs> I think he's on this <laughs> webinar. Oh, I bet you're right. Well, and it looks like we have an easy way to contact you, Greg, as well as Jerry and Jeannie. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if anyone ever has any questions, um, even if they're not in your region, of course, they can reach out to you. Is that correct, Greg? I will definitely put them in the right direction to contact anybody. Um, messengers made these partnerships with some of these companies, with the exception of um, the guys in Thunder Bay. The DNA Memorial Lazarus DNA, um, I can help them directly, but um, we can get them set up to take a look at any of these memorialization products. Wow. Well, that's that's awesome, Greg. I know I have learned a lot today, and I sure appreciate your time and just joining us. Um, oh, this is a lot of fun. Well, yeah, it's been great, and I sure hope we can have you as a guest again. Um, I'm sure you have a lot more that we just haven't covered today. Oh, and gosh. In case we... <laughs> Yeah, it, I had all kinds of extra things I was going to share in case we didn't have any questions. So. Well, round two is going to be coming up. <laughs> but, you know, if anyone has any guest suggestions, reach out, Greg. If you have some guest suggestions, we'd love to hear them, too. Um, so my name's Michelle, mm -hmm. Michelle Imam Box. I'm with Opus Senta. We have my email and my phone number on here. So feel free to reach out to me with any questions. And please reach out to Greg to learn a little more about what he's talked about today. It's been some uh, pretty revolutionary items especially the dna memorial to me that just still blows my mind so <laughs> thanks <for sharing laughs> it's hard for a lot of people to take it in yeah <laughs> it's a lot well, thank but you that's so much for cool. yeah. yeah thank you very much michelle it's been great being with you and well, thanks for everybody much. who attended this webinar all right Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everyone. We're going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, please do join us next month. We have another special guest. Her name is Nancy Weil, and we would love to see you there. So please do sign up for that. And again, Greg, Marlena, everyone who joined us, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye now. Bye.